Mike Farrell, Rivals.com here as a budding NFL draft expert, but also as a guy who's been recruiting, uh, following the recruiting process for, I don't know, 100 years. I'm here with Kenny Eboa from Old Miss, NFL draft prospect. So looking up your profile and saw we gave you two stars, which you clearly played past that. Um, what's your first memory of, of recruitment? Um, you know, was it the first letter you got or was it the first offer? What, what was it? It was my first offer, honestly. So really, I grew up in Providence, Rhode Island. Me, my dad's a semiconductor engineer. He relocated us to Allentown, Pennsylvania, where I went to high school at Parkland High School. Really good high school. And I'll never forget, like, coming from a small town in Rhode Island, a lot of people don't get to play college football in general. Like, I played with Quiddy Pay. He's one of the other people that made it out when I played with him in Little League and stuff like that. So really... It was just like a shock to me again. My first offer, I got my first offer from Old Dominion University, and it was for H back tight end type of thing. And it was an FBS offer. I remember being on the bus. I literally remember being on the bus and going to a basketball game because I played basketball at the high school. And my head coach for football, Jim Morgans, called me and told me that Old, Mid had, Old Dominion had offered me. And I was like, what? Like a like a full scholarship. It was just something that I was not really ever used to, like I said. So I remember calling my parents and telling them, like, hey, you guys don't have to pay for school. Like, I'm, I'm a Division One athlete. Like, I'm getting offers. So that's really what I remember, just, like, getting my first offer, and I was super stoked about it. Did you go to Bishop Hendrickson? No, I didn't go to Bishop Hendrickson. So I, I left um, March of my freshman year. So I was not at Bishop Hendrickson with that. I went to eat. Did, did any of the – I mean, do you know Will Blackman at all? Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. I heard because a he's a Rhode Island kid. You know, there's very few Rhode Island kids I can remember that made it. Um, yeah. You know, and I know he's involved with kids from Rhode Island and helping them out and things like that. So have you talked yeah. to him at all about what, what the NFL is like? Mm -mm, I have. I just know of him. I mean, really, like he went to Hendrickson. So I know him and Quiddy kind of got that connection from there and Quiddy being a outstanding player at Hendrickson. So I never really got to get in contact with him because I left like real early. I'll get you in touch with him. He's a good kid. Um, a kid. He's probably like 35 years old now. I don't even know. But so <laughs> why Temple? Temple came in with the offer and, and why did you choose them? So Temple was one of my biggest offers coming out of high school. I didn't have very many FBS offers other than Old, other than Old Dominion. So the pitch to me coming out of high school was really I was 215 coming out of high school, had a big frame, and the coaches just told me that if you put some weight on, could bring that receiver aspect of your game to the next level. So <clears throat> I always knew that my end goal was to make it to the NFL. So as a 17-year-old kid coming out of high school and going to college, I just like bought into the process of just becoming a great tight end, just learning how to block, learning from the older guys in front of me. And then I also had like my athletic ability from playing wide receiver in high school. So that's really what led me to Temple. And then and then at the same time, Temple was doing great. They won the conference that year, my first year, they beat Penn State when I was getting recruited. So they were up and coming and then having great coaches like Coach Rule, Coach Snow, Coach Foley. It was just, I just could not, could not not take it. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, I see a, a Rivals Camp picture here of you probably from circa 2015. You look so young, uh, <laughs> you know, bright eyed and bushy tailed. 6'4", 215 as a wide receiver. Did you mind the change to tight end? No, I honestly, at first I was a little like eh, skeptical about it, but um, I really did it. Like I bought, like I said, I bought into it the first day that I got to Temple. I remember a lot of my friends in high school were like, bro, you're playing tight end in college. I was like, yeah, I am. But I mean, like I said, I just really just from the first day I was there, just bought into the process, trying to get myself bigger and trying to get myself ready to be a, a great tight end. You remember anything about that rivals camp or, or in, any of that? Uh, you might have attended too, but do you remember anything specific about it? Like that was a, uh, sort of a step up in competition regionally. Yeah, definitely. I would say like the one on ones, because <clears throat> like really growing up, I, I my both my parents are African descendants, so they moved to the states when they were eighteen. So soccer was like the first sport I played, and then I played basketball, then I played football. So it was uh, like I was just like really raw, honestly. Like in high school, I was just like athlete like a real good athlete like I could go up and get the ball and I was bigger than everybody so it was just different like going to like the camp and then there's actual like people there that had like good technique and like a real real good player so it was it was different for me when I got to the rivals camp just like playing against that competition but I felt like it made me even better and then you transferred to uh, Ole Miss for the 2020 season obviously Lane Kiffin I could ask you a billion stories about him but 
let's talk first about how he develops tight ends. Um, he's well known for it. There's no question. Obviously, he's you know known for OJ Howard and, and and guys like that, some big name guys. But there's been some other guys at, at smaller schools he's developed. Was that part of the reason? Yeah, def- definitely, one hundred percent. So, really, when I was so I was committed to Baylor when I entered the portal, and then I seen Coach Rule left, and I knew there was a chance of him leaving because my position coach for my three years at Temple was Ed Foley, who went back to Baylor with him and is currently on the Panthers with him. So, um, yeah, really, I just like, I just like knew. I just like knew really that Coach Kiffin would use me the right way. And then also I had a chance to talk with Harrison Bryant, literally just messaged him on Instagram. I was like, hey, man, can I talk to you? I'm thinking about transferring to Ole Miss. And he just gave me, I knew he'd be real with me and gave me the real rundown, telling me about the strength coach, telling me how Coach Kiffin uses tight ends. And then also Harrison won the Mackey Award the year before that. So, I mean, it was just kind of like a no-brainer. I knew Coach Kiffin was going to use me. And then also seeing Coach Lebby, and the type of offense he had, because I played at Temple, obviously, and we played against UCF. So the, I remember my last year there before I decided to transfer, they beat us 63 to 28 and throwing the ball all around. So I just see how up tempo and fast their offense was and how potent it was. So it really, it was just like a no brainer, really, to go there and play tight end for them. And you had a, a breakout year. I mean, obviously, at Temple, um, you had uh, some solid seasons, five touchdowns in 2019, but, you know, 27 catches in seven games, 524 yards. Averaging nearly 20 yards a catch and six touchdowns. What do you think uh, Kiffin and the staff there did to sort of help you elevate that game and make make you uh, a step better? For, yeah, definitely. For me, I just felt like they used me to my abilities. Like, I felt like at Temple, my coaches just kind of hindered me and kind of kept me as like a tight end that can only block and not really be a vertical deep threat. So I feel like Coach Kiffin and them really use really used me to the best of my abilities. And also, like, I learned a lot from Joe John Finley, Coach Finley, who's not there anymore. But I learned a lot from him during my time with him, just learning how to stem and just run routes, get out of routes, like create separation at the top of routes. Because, you know, tight ends, we're not the fastest. We're not the we're not the quickest and stuff like that. So you got to know how to use your body and use your strength. So that's really what I learned from them and that they they really just, like, helped me with that, honestly. Here's the knock on... Kenny Yaboa, and you've heard it, right? Mm-hmm. Everybody has positives, negatives, positives, pass catching tight end. Can, and it's funny, I read some of these scouting reports, you know, can stretch the field, uh, adjust to, to bad balls well, uh, good vision and good adjustment in the air, uh, mm-hmm. yet not fast enough, lacks elite burst. Um, how can you stretch the field and not be fast enough? <laughs> Honestly, I, I, don't, I don't know. Um... I mean, I'm a, I'm a fast guy, so I don't know. I mean, people always have, like, their little bits and bits about what about your weaknesses and things like that. But, I mean, I never really think about that too much. I know what I can do. So, I mean, i really just been trying to get even better each day, honestly. The real big thing that I've been focusing on is, like, in the NFL, like, there's small margin of error, error honestly. Like, the windows are tighter, so it's really just, like, making sure you're using strong hands, like make, cause you got to make those contested catches, like coming back to the ball, not drifting. It's just like the little details. That's really what I've been focusing on in the off season, just to help my game, take it to the next level. Cause if I could do that, be running a four or five at two fifty, two forty five, 245, and it'll just help me at the next level, honestly. Now, have you talked to Mark Ingram? No, I have not. Mm-mm. You think Mark Ingram hurts you at all? You know, people say Ole Miss tight end. He was a first rounder with the Giants. Been hurt a lot. Um, you know, you're a little bigger than him, but um, you know, he's he was a six foot three, two hundred thirty five pound kid or so. Mm-hmm. Do you think? Do you hear any of that? Mm-hmm. No, I, I have not. I don't even know who who that is, honestly. Because <laughs> I'm yeah. just curious. Because certain. <laughs> Certain schools, sometimes if the guy ahead of you a few years goes in the first round as a certain position, the, mm-hmm. the assumption from fans is that there might be a knock against you and you have nothing to do with him. You don't even know who that is. But yeah. if he doesn't pan out, then people are, are, are slower to go on the next guy at that position. So that was yeah. a, a curiosity question. Uh, the other question, you know, where do you hear yourself falling? Uh, is it day two, day three? From day two or day three, like day two, early, early day three. That's why I see myself falling. Honestly, that's really where I, where I do. But I mean, regardless of where I go, um, I'm going to work hard <laughs> and I'm going to show people that 
I'm a top tight end in this draft class. And that's really just like my main focus, honestly. Like, I mean, I'm not really worried about like the external stuff. I'm just worrying about myself, trying to get myself better each day in everything I do as being to just be a whole tight end. As a draft prospect, obviously you've got, you know, representation. And how do you, how do you weed through, you know, what teams are more interested than others in your thought process or how, how can you tell that a team, you know, maybe there's six teams that are looking at me that have a good shot to take me at the bottom of round two. Um, does representation help that or is it conversations with coaches? Yeah, honestly, for me, I've just always been like a, a person that can feel like energy and just like vibes. Like, I feel like you can like tell like when you're, when I'm me with a coach, like, if they're really interested in me, why that's the way they talk, like the way that they look at me and just like when they're listening to me talk that they're like, look interested. So I feel like you can definitely tell. And then also like the way they just talk about, like, they don't like say like, if you come here, like they're like saying like, when you're here, like when you're here, this is how we would do it. Like you can, you can kind of, you can kind of tell like really like you could tell from just like keyword, like even with, like, you know, how when someone's lying, you can tell when someone's lying just by like the stuff that they say. That's, that's kind of like similar to that. So I can really like tell by like what teams are really like need me and like want me and how they want to use me and things like that. Uh, there's a couple of teams, obviously at the end of round one, the middle of round one that need tight ends, but there's two intriguing teams at the end of round, I'm sorry, round two uh, that interest me um, who are looking for depth at tight end. Uh -huh. Have you heard from Kansas City and Tampa Bay a lot? Uh, Not Tampa Bay, but I've heard from Kansas City. Yes, sir. So what would it be like to go to to the Chiefs and, and and work as a as a primary backup to a Travis Kelsey? I mean, how important would that be? Or would you want to go to a team that just has no lead tight end and it's just a battle immediately for the starting job? Honestly, for me, I would either would be fine with me. I mean, like to be somewhere with the Chiefs with like a person like Travis Kelsey would be a dream come true at the same time because I'd be able to just like learn from one of the best. And that's kind of like what I did like my freshman year when I first got to Temple. I was just learning from the tight ends in front of me. And I really like I'm the type of person that like when I see people do it, like I kind of like orchestrate it in my head to like see what they if they did it well or did it bad. And I try to mimic it the next time I do it in my rep. So. I'm really good at like taking like mental notes. So that's why I feel like that would definitely help me as a player because I, I know who I am and that's like the type of person I am. But then even like going into like a system that's being like the new tight end, I mean, I'll definitely accept the challenge and it'll be fun just to work with the other tight ends there, work with my tight ends coach, just to put myself in the best position. So when I go on the field, I could just execute everything at a hundred percent and full tilt. What's the uh, difference between the AAC and the SEC? The difference, the biggest difference I noticed was just the the size, really. Like the DNs and you guys, some of your DNs in the AAC that are like 250, maybe like 260, maybe. But then you got DNs in the SEC that are like 285, 290. So, I mean, it's just like the, the people were bigger. I really didn't notice like a crazy like difference in like level of talent. Wise, because I mean, I played with a lot of guys at Temple that are in the NFL now, so I played against a lot of good competition. And then a lot of people from like UCF, USF, like all those schools that have great players too that come out of there. So I played against good competition. So really, when I got there, I wasn't even thinking SEC. I was just thinking I'm playing ball, like I'm just playing football, and that's what I did when I got there. Played in all all SEC schedule last season. Is there anybody that you went against that was just? very memorable whether it's trying to block down on the defensive end or a yeah. linebacker trying to cover you or some some lock corner trying to take care of you anybody that stands out um someone that i played against that stood out was number one from florida uh i'm not sure his name he was a dn i know he was a dn but he was pretty good he was just he was just kind of like me honestly like he was long he was tall athletic um, use his hands real well. Like, so that, that he was, he was definitely a good player. I would say that was one of like the top players. I would say that, that it was fun to like play against. Like he was a real good player. Um, who else? JC Horn, JC Horn's a real good player too. Physical, aggressive, like type corner. And I like those type of corners. So props to him. Uh, those are the two top people I would say that are good players for sure. And how fun is it to play with Elijah? I mean, how much does he open things up for you? 
man, he, he was a joy, joy to play with. And just like fun to watch. Honestly, like some of the stuff he would do, he'd just be like, wow. Like just like, I would just watch him every day. And this is also like the way he just carried himself. That's one of the things that I appreciate about him. And like, he doesn't listen to like the who, like, the outside noise, he just does what he does. And he he's confident in what he does also. That's why I really, I really like look at him for it. Like he really takes confidence in whatever he does, like on the field. You could just see it. Like he just like breeds he just like his aroma just like breeds confidence, honestly. And he's just a ball player. Um yeah, really. He was he was he was fun to play with, honestly. He was real fun to play with. I play with guys that are like his caliber and that they complain and stuff like that. He's not that type of guy. Like he just, he just works day in and day out just to get better. And he's a really, really good player. He's still trying to get even better. Yeah. You see, you seem to have an outgoing personality. Elijah in high school was ridiculously outgoing. Is he still a chatterbox on the field? And, and are you, I mean, do you talk? Yeah, for sure. For sure. Definitely. We talk, we talk about a bunch of like, and it's not, we're talking about like BS. We're talking about like real life stuff. Like, real life stuff like Elijah is a real realist honestly and that's what I enjoyed about him like it wouldn't he wouldn't be talking about like girls or talking about going out to parties and doing all that stuff like he was worried about his craft getting good at football and just like just trying to improve himself every day like spiritually also not just like being a good football player because at the end of the day like he knows that he's a football player but at the end of the day like realization he's not just a football player like He's a person too. So yeah. And that's just how I am too. Like I know like football, I love football so much and I, but at the end of the day, I'm still a human and I still care about other things and I have beliefs and all that stuff. So yeah. Where are you going to be on draft day? I'll be home. I'm back home in Alta, Pennsylvania. I've been training at one of the places here. You uh, going to be with family just waiting for phone? Yeah. Yes, sir. I'd be with family just waiting, just waiting oh. to how hard do you think it's going to be to watch the first round? Just sort of, even though you expect to go two or three, day two or three, are you going to watch the first round and just like at 25, 26, be like tense? Yeah. Uh, no, not be tense. I won't be tense. I mean, it's just all God's plan. I just put it all in God's hands. The hard work that I put in and all these years, it'll all, it'll all come to show and I'll get drafted. I know I will. Somebody, somebody will get me, and whoever gets me, I promise they'll get the hardest worker, and they'll get one of the top tight ends in this draft class. And people will see that in August, September, and they'll wish that they had picked me. But at this point, I'm not really too worried about that. Honestly, I'm still gonna watch the first round, second round. I'm gonna watch all of it because I have friends that are in the draft, and I'm gonna support them the same way as they would support me if I was getting drafted that high. So, um, yeah, honestly. Last questions are about Kiffin. So there's two Lane Kiffins that I've met, and I've only met one briefly. That's the the crazy Lane Kiffin, the outgoing, funny Lane Kiffin. And then there's the new, serious, not getting trouble Lane Kiffin by not saying anything, you know, outrageous. Mm -hmm. uh, what's he like at practice and, 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 you know, team meetings and all that stuff? Because people don't really get to see inside of, of what Kiffin's like. Yeah, he really he really just keeps it real with us. Like he's not one of those coaches that are going to like if we have a bad practice, he's going to scream at us and tell us like, oh, because these other teams are doing their practices and you guys want to mess up and not like he just keeps it real how it is. He just like you guys had a bad day of practice. Another team had a good day of practice and they're ahead of you now. Like they're just they're just ahead of you, honestly. So he was just to keep it real. He's not, he's not one of those like big coaches that are screaming, yelling, giving these crazy speeches. He's just real. And he just keeps it real with us. And he just tells us how it is, gives us the plan to win. And he just like, literally like, I remember every Friday before the games on Saturday, we'd have to each position group. Like I have to go up in front of the team and tell them the tight ends plans to win and things like that. So it was really just like coach Kiffin, just like, he really made it like a, a family environment too at the same time. And he doesn't really talk that much, but just like the way that he was and the way that he talked to us, the way that he loved us, like it was just fun. Like he doesn't talk much, honestly, like I practice, he don't really talk much, but I mean, sometimes he intervene and, and give his like two cents and things like that. But overall he was a great coach. Like I, I loved playing for him. I enjoyed playing for him. And it was just, it was just fun. It was just fun. All right. So draft is coming. Kenny Yaboa. Uh, I put him as one of my uh, tight end values. I think uh, the other day uh, in an article, I think 
Uh, late second, third rounds will be uh, the fit for him, and he's going to make that two-star look kind of bad, but we have an <laughs> excuse, man. You were a big, raw, wide receiver, didn't yeah. you? Know what you were doing and just beat everybody because uh, you were bigger I'm, than everybody. Yeah, else. that's really what it was. <laughs> <laughs> but I appreciate it. The time, um, and and we wish you luck, and we'll be following you at Rivals throughout your career. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot, man. I appreciate it.